hello hello so today I know I didn't do this yesterday and that's a really long story which I will I will tell you while we're crafting I'm going to try one of Gail's trifold envelopes um, <laughs> another first without trying this first straight on camera I, I've, I've got a kind of idea of what I want this to turn out like so I've done a little bit of experimenting before I started to film only because um, I didn't know how long that whole process was going to take and it did actually it did take me a little while but not too long to come to a conclusion so obviously the first thing we need are three envelopes trifold envelopes so we need three envelopes <laughs> And um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to use the... I, I, know, I know in Gail's video she mentions this is not her idea. I think somebody sent her one of these trifold envelopes and then Gail um, kind of made it her own. I think it may have been Tammy. Um, I, I apologise. I don't, I don't remember. I probably should have checked the video first, shouldn't I? Um, but obviously the idea came from it. From, for me, the idea came from Gail. And I also wanted to combine it with um, Sabrina's envelopes that she did recently. Crafty Savvy. Hi Sabrina. Hi Gail. Um, so it's a kind of combination of the, the two ideas that, that I wanted to, to do. So what I did was, you can obviously use any envelopes. I made some using my envelope punch and this is eight and a quarter inches. I don't know what that is in centimetres because I don't understand inches. Um, but that's how big this envelope is. I obviously made I made five because I wanted to, like I said, experiment. So what I did was I ran it through my embossing folder. Fab. Um, my embossing folder is quite a small one. So obviously I tucked this flap over the embossing folder and ran it through with the envelope um, kind of closed up like this. And this is great. It's kind of okay. The front's fine, because it's embossed the correct way, but the back is obviously embossed the wrong way. Um, I, I tried to ink it to see what it looked like. Let me just stand up for a second. Um, and if you can see, I've inked it as well to see. Um, Obviously, I really like this effect, and I really like this effect, but you can't get the same effect on both panels. If you've got a big embossing machine, then fab. If you don't have an embossing machine at all, obviously, one, you don't have to emboss. Two, you could use embossed paper, you know, from a paper pad. Um, but what I thought was, this is too heavy. The embossing is too heavy for my liking. So I had a think and I remember Jibbid talking about using her embossing folder or something to emboss. It might not have been a folder, but she used a rolling pin and really kind of pushed hard. So she got bits of the embossing. And I thought, well, that's a really good idea. Maybe I could try that maybe give it a bit more of a vintage look and then I thought maybe I could just rolling pin over this to flatten it and then I thought hang on you've got your embossing machine right here I could use that to flatten it <laughs> so what I did was I, I embossed the whole envelope and then I took this out of the embossing folder and just put it on top of the embossing folder because it's flat and then I put it in my plasticky bits and then I ran it through the embossing folder again and I got, that's been through twice, that was another experiment. I got this effect, if you can see. It's still slightly embossed but it's much more subtle and it doesn't matter whether you've got the embossing forward or backwards because the effect is much more subtle. So I inked this up and I loved it. I really did. So if you can see the difference... So basically I just embossed it and then I flattened it using the, um, the embossing machine. So what I did do in advance is made three embossed envelopes that I embossed and then flattened. 
And just in case you want to know, this particular paper is a hundred and hundred and twenty GSM, or is it hundred and sixty? Ah. I think it's either 100, well it is either 120 or 160 GSM paper, so I'm going to sit back down again and we're going to continue the experiment together. Now, what Gail does is she takes the flap of each envelope and she sticks it over the top here, like that. And then she uses um, some kind of paper to cover the whole thing up. Now, I don't, I don't want to do that because I don't want, one, I don't want this to have to be covered up and two, I'm not sure I like the flap showing. So I had a couple of thoughts. First of all is I could actually turn this into some kind of a pocket. So we could turn that into a pocket and then the other thought I had was rather than glue that on the outside, why don't we glue that on the inside? Because we already have that kind of that image that this shape on the inside and then I thought what I would actually do is maybe fold this down and cut it so we have the pocket in the envelope and a pocket in the flap and that would all still fold up now what I'm aware of is on the outside we're going to have a join and I've already thought of a couple of ways we can cover this up um, and then we still haven't got this flap on the outside. So that's that's my that's my pre-thinking, pre-project thinking. Um, but what we're going to have to do is just see how it goes. If you're happy with that, I'm happy with that. So the other thing you do get is when you've put in this through the embossing folder, you actually get a little crease. <laughs> um, but again, I'm I'm fine with that. I don't mind that at all. Now, am I zoomed in enough? I think that's okay. Right. So. Step one, we need to cut the top off two of these two of these envelopes because they're going to be our pockets. I hope this is making sense. It makes complete sense to me, um, but then I know what I'm going to do. Now, there's a bit of a bonus with this. Um, I actually have lines here from this where I put it through my embossing folder. So what I'm thinking of doing is just cutting directly along there because I know that's going to be square. So what I'm going to do, and obviously you don't have to be, you can make this any size you like, you don't even have to put these pockets in, it's just what I was thinking. Now I can't actually see it. Right, I've got one here, I'm just going to put a little crease there and one there. I'm going to put a little crease there. So this is where I want to cut. I'm going to line this up. Now I've had a lot of problems with my my cutting tool the last couple of days. So let's see. Oh, it's being kind. And this one, I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm just going to put a little crease there. And I'm going to put a little crease here. So yeah, um, this is not a let's create like Gale. This is a let's let's um, let's create like Tracy Fox. This is just um, this is just go. Oh, see, look what's happened. I'm going to have to carry on with that because I don't have everything ready to. Um, what could let me just round that off a little bit. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing this in Gale style. Although when I say I'm doing it in my style, I'm probably not doing it in my style either because um, I suppose this is a little bit shabby chic again, which is not normally my thing. But I'm really enjoying it actually. It's um, you know what they say: change is as good as a rest. So we'll have our little pocket there. What do you think? Okay, so what I'm going to do before I glue all these together, unfortunately, is I'm going to ink. But while I ink, I'm going to tell you a little story <laughs> about why I didn't do my video yesterday. So, um, this, was, this was planned for yesterday. I had every intentions of doing this yesterday. Um, but I don't know about any of you lot out there listening and watching. Um, 
when as a crafter or an artist when you kind of have an idea about something you don't have a lot of patience are you the same you just you get this idea and you really just want to do it you, you want to do it you have to get it done now um, again I think I mentioned this the other day my dad um, had said he was going to build me in a desk because um, my beautiful desk um, my beautiful writing desk was much too low for me to sit under so I was sitting at a very very uncomfortable angle and obviously now um, I'm sitting here for well 16 hours a day pretty much I'm sitting at my desk for 16 hours a day so it was not ideal and my dad said I'll, I'll build you a desk um, I sit in the recess in the dining room so the plan was to find two very small drawer units to kind of prop the desk up and MDF top nice big workspace you know fill the gap marvellous so I had that idea in my head and um, I just couldn't wait I couldn't wait to find two drawer units that were going to be the right size and I couldn't wait to have um, space to put my legs under the desk and I couldn't wait well basically I just couldn't wait for any of it I just wanted it I mean, <laughs> once I'd got this idea in my head I wanted I wanted a comfortable desk so we my other half and I decided well I decided he just had to come along really for the muscle um, I decided I was going to go out and I was either going to find in a, a second hand furniture store charity store I was going to find two drawers and I was going to make this desk myself or I was going to find a bigger desk um, a proper desk and I was going to buy that so off we go off we go to every furniture store in the region um, and we didn't find anything we didn't find any drawers anything like that but what we did find in the very last shop was a desk it had a metal frame base and um, oh my god this is probably a really boring story for you to listen to anyway it had a metal base and it had a really rubbish top on it but I was like oh do you know what um, we'll take that home I'll take the top off the base is perfect um, we put a chair against it and it was just the right size um, I said that's it that's the that's what we're going to do nice and easy yeah yeah brilliant so we get this frame home and um, you know being the recycler that I am we had decided that we didn't want our coffee table anymore we've got a small house and the coffee table is a really big kind of heavy wooden coffee table I'm just filling time telling you this story while I'm inking so I really apologise <laughs> um, yeah this coffee table is too big um, and we work out in our lounge and whenever we work out we have to move the coffee table into the dining room door to get it out of the way and we do this every day and we're like you know it's pointless we need to get rid of that coffee table but it's a really nice coffee table so we don't really want to get rid of it because it's an old vintage kind of heavy wood coffee table so we decide or I decide I'm going to take the legs off the coffee table and use the coffee table top as a desktop because it's going to look awesome it's going to look brilliant I won't tell you the ins and outs of the trouble we had getting the legs off the coffee table followed by the hassle we had with the desktop off the frame anyway it happened we screwed we screwed the coffee table top to the desk base only to find that it wobbled at least a foot side to side because the coffee table top was way too heavy for the base and it also tipped forward because obviously the base um, only came about three quarters of the length across the cof of the, the desktop so um, that was that was plan A so we very rapidly took the top off the base and I have two drawer units so we thought oh they're like map drawers let's use those 
So we drag, we emptied them so we could move them because they're so heavy. We put them in this space and we put the top on and it was just, I've never laughed so hard in my life because what we didn't do is measure the height of the drawer units. One was an inch and a half shorter than the other so the top was going like this. So that was no good. So that was plan B. So we moved on to plan C which was um, uh, wardrobe doors. <laughs> So basically what happened was, I wanted to keep my old desk. To keep my old desk, I needed to move my bureau, which was in the lounge, because it's the only place that this desk would fit. So we emptied the bureau so we could take that up to our bedroom, but I had two wardrobes in my bedroom. So before all of this happened, I had to literally strip my wardrobe. I, I had three bin liners full of clothes that I didn't want anymore. So I could reduce two wardrobes into one wardrobe. So we took the one of the wardrobes outside. So we had room to put the bureau upstairs. Um, and then because plan B didn't work, we decided to take the doors off the wardrobe that were now out in the front drive waiting to go to the dump. We took the doors, the doors off, brought those in, laid those on top of the, <laughs> the desk base and it just looked ridiculous. So finally, I went to the hardware store, I went to B&Q and I purchased a piece of MDF that fits in the gap and popped that onto the base. And now it's brilliant. I've just got to do the top. So that was a very long story and I do apologise, but that's why I didn't do a video yesterday because all of this took us until half past eight last night. And we started at, I don't know what time, yesterday morning. So, now I've bored you to tears with my desk story. <laughs> um, we've got three envelopes that are inked. Um, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to make them a little bit darker. With the darker ink. Just in patches. I'm not going to do this everywhere. So, just going to do little bits just to give it a bit of an aged look. I know Crafty Sabby used different kind of inks and things to, to do her envelopes. Yep, quite like that. Um, so yeah, that was the, the very boring long desk story, so I apologise for that. But obviously I'd started telling you about my desk saga, so I wanted to keep you up to date. <laughs> <laughs> when we put the top on those two drawers it was just so funny I'm sure you had to be here but we are we are budget and scarper we really are when it comes to DIY most things in our house are stuck to the wall with no more nails so if we ever move half the plaster is going to come off the walls <laughs> with with our pictures <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll just break the glass take the pictures out and leave the frames on the wall <laughs> I quite like this not, you know, not doing the inking all over the place, not everywhere. And what I am going to do at the end is, um, on this one, I used the bronze oil pastel, so I'm going to do that again. I really like that. Okay, so, oh, it's not very much over here, it's a bit bright over there. There we go. So, we now have three embossed and inked envelopes. So, the full one is going to be our top envelope and the two where we've cut the flaps are going to be here oh I'm such a numpty because this is the side I need to ink and I probably need to ink around here don't I oh this is a lot of inking I really should have done this before I filmed shouldn't I I'm sorry 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 again let's get this done Quick, quick. Chop, chop. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? But it is very lovely. I can, I can move my legs up and down. I can sit under the desk. I can cross my legs. Even though I know that's not very good for you. It's not good for your circulation. Um, but yeah, brilliant. Love it. I said I was going to eat all my meals here. Now. Cool. 
And I suppose we really should do this bit because this is going to show too, isn't it? So all of you, all of all of you that have said you don't get bored watching me ink, <laughs> you're going to take that back now <laughs> because this is a lot of inking, a lot of inking. Um, but it's really hard to kind of um, if you prep too much, you know, there's not a lot to show, is there? Do too much prep. Right, last last little dash, just a little bit here and there. Just a bit, I'm probably going to find out I've inked the wrong bit. Oh, got a circle there. Probably going to find out I've inked the wrong bit, aren't I? When I get a bit further through this, I realise. Or ink something else, but hopefully that's the inking done. Well, you know, till we embellish maybe. So that's our top envelope, that's our full one. This is our first pocket, and this will be our second pocket. So let's go and glue. Yeah, we'll glue the pockets first. Just trying to think what the best way to do this would be. Um, I just need to pick off the dry glue from there. Right, so I'm going to run a bead of glue along here and all the way around this part of the flap. I do hope this is going to work. It's kind of, you know, when in your head you have the idea and you have the plan, but when you put it into action, oh, see, I'm an idiot. That's not a pocket now, is it? Okay, well the bottom one, um, how can I rectify this? There must be a way. Right, this is the this is the dodgy envelope I did before. So I'm gonna stick this to that. Oh that looks quite cute, but that's got a bit of a tear in, so that's not gonna work. Maybe it will. No. Okay, that's the other thing with um, embossing folders. If you use, um, I don't know what kind of paper it is, but lots of paper will actually just, um, the embossing folder rips a hole in it. You know, it pierces the paper rather than just embosses it. Does anyone else find that? I should probably look and see if there's a video of how to not go through your paper when you emboss. It doesn't do it all the time, that's the weird thing. Okay, we're back to square one. Just need to cut this. Oh, I should have cut that off first, shouldn't I? What am I doing? Try and rectify one mistake and just make another. Just need to be really careful I don't cut the bottom of that envelope because the last thing I want to do is have a hole in it. Right, that one is now pants. Okay, so now I'm going to have to ink this. <laughs> no, I'm not, because that's going there, isn't it? I'm just going to ink this. Page. There we go. You'll never know that mistake happened now. And we can make a pocket again. Yay! Yay me! <laughs> Hopefully that's nice and stuck down. What this is though, is this is, I'm going to just go over this with my bone folder because this is the heavily embossed one. I'm not using the other one because that envelope is actually, I'm quite happy with that and I want to use that for something else. So what I'm doing is I'm just flattening, it, flattening out some of that embossed texture with the bone folder. Perfect. And now let's just pretend that little bit didn't happen. I think I had deja vu then. I've been here before. <laughs> now my glue won't come out because I left the lid off it. I'm so clever. Okay. Right, so that's that's a way you can resolve that issue. If you have that issue where you glue your pocket shut, stick it to something quick and then um, and then you can carry on as if nothing ever happened. Now I've got to line this up 
with this pocket with this flap and we're going to shut that and we do now have a pocket there Oh, these things are sent to tries, aren't they? Yeah, okay. So that's part one done. Now we need to do the same on this one, but not with the mistake. So, um, I could edit that out, <laughs> but I can't. Well, I, I can, but I won't, simply because it, this, I film on my Lumix camera. And if I take the movies in to iMovie, which is because I'm on a Mac, if I take it in to iMovie, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to transfer the original video into iMovie. Once it's in there, I can drag them and join them, or I can cut out bits if I want to. And then I have to save it to my Mac, which can take anything up to an hour and a half um, and it's got something to do with the file format that my Lumix films records on so there, there you go so we've now got this rather funny looking flappy triple envelope right um, I can guarantee this will be two parts um, it's because you know this is going to take me longer than half an hour and I apologize again so we're going to glue that together like this and hope with every single thing I have to cross that this works. That looks like it's going to work, doesn't it? It's going to be quite thick, it's quite bulky. but So I'm going to glue this one down first and only the bit that I want to glue. It's not coming out particularly well because I keep leaving the lid off it. And I know that's not what you're supposed to do. And it stopped me doing it though. Okay, so that's one. I can see Gal now going, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. And the thing is, I'd like to say I don't make mistakes generally. I just, I do, I do make mistakes, but I make twice as many when the camera's on. And I don't think I'm alone with that. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone with that. Only I'm sure not everybody glues their pockets down. Right, so that's envelope number two glued. Let's do number three. I suppose I should actually check that this is still filming. Oh, that would be a really good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard a beep yet. So, there we go. Let's get this third one down. Now, obviously, this one has not got a pocket. And I'm not, I'm not going to do anything to give that one a pocket, unfortunately. We're just going to have these two. These two pockets here, there and there. But I think it looks quite vintage. I like the look of it, do you? So the next thing we need to tackle is I'm actually probably going to round that, score that maybe. When we're done, I'm going to score this so there's a... Um, a, almost a little spine to hold the thickness of the envelopes because that is obviously going to be a little bit of an issue but we oh, I could do that couldn't I just I don't want to do it too too permanently at the minute so there we have our gale I'm a bit concerned about that because I've bent it slightly we have our gale trifold envelope and I just think that looks amazing as it is that doesn't look too bad um, so now we need to tackle these um, they actually don't look as bad 